I'm sure we all know someone that has quit TF2. It's natural. I'm sure it's something a good percentage of the player base has contemplated at least once in their life. Like, when does my time playing TF2 end and when do I quit and just move on? For some people, you leave fairly early and you never come back, dismissing the game and most things about it because it didn't really click with you and it wasn't really your thing. And that is absolutely fine. But for others who might have invested many hours and days and weeks and months and years of their life, you might think you've quit, but have you actually quit? It seems to me that TF2 has always found a way to drag people back from whatever games they decided to play in its place and remind them of just how much they truly love this game. Whether that rekindled love for the game lasts very long is a completely different story, but the fact is TF2 keeps bringing people back to it somehow, which is, you know, quite scary. Listen, to anybody who has quit TF2 never to return, or people who have been forced to quit for completely unrelated reasons, it is completely valid. Nobody can expect you to play the same game, and only that game, for your whole life. You need some variety. You just do. And with the state of the game over the past few years, I'm actually surprised at how many people have stuck around, you know? Remember back in 2020 when we literally couldn't play a game for a few days because a bot could just join and shut the server down just because they could? That was pretty crazy, or, you know, after Valve fixing that problem where we had the onslaught of cheating bots that still to this day haunt certain TF2 servers. And people are still here, people are still playing this game, that is absolutely crazy. What other games would be like this? It's a huge part of why I love such a massive part of this community, they keep going no matter what gets thrown at them. But I won't lie, I, I think sometimes making content on this game and having a channel bigger than it probably deserves to be, in fact, bigger than it definitely deserves to be, right? It probably makes me feel a lot more pressure to stick around and just kind of put up with the endless fountain of crap that comes out of this game sometimes. I've had multiple nights over the years where I've really considered whether or not I would still be as invested in this game if I never made any videos about it. Would it have been the 10 year adventure it's been so far, or would I have played it for a few months and gone back to Minecraft. I don't know. I know that making videos about this game has definitely forced me to look at it in a bunch of different ways and think of different things to do to try and keep the content interesting and to not make myself get bored of making things about it, you know? So I definitely think that's had a huge part in keeping me here. There's also that little thing, at least from my perspective, of trying to branch out from making TF2 content now that I do make videos and I am a YouTuber, I guess. And doing that on the same channel has always been incredibly daunting and scary for me. Sure, you've obviously had a couple of people who have left TF2 to be incredibly successful in whatever content they decided to make afterwards. But on the flip side, you have dozens of incredibly talented TF2 content creators that have moved on to other kind of avenues of content and have basically just disappeared. And knowing my look, I would be one of them. Now I've kind of just solved this problem myself by making a second channel for variety content and not pushing all of my TF2 subscribers to it. That's solved this problem for me. But if I did ever want to branch out on this channel and move into something else, then it would be really scary. Like if I ever decided to quit TF2, would this channel just die? I don't know. And I know for most of the community, right, that isn't going to be something that affects whether or not they quit TF2 or not, right? They're just going to leave the game and not play it and then come back if they want to play it. Like, it's just a lot simpler and much more straightforward. I just don't think I've ever seen a game like TF2 that has such a weird thing about it that pulls people back the way TF2 does. I've seen people come back from 10 year breaks of this game thinking they were done with it forever just to jump back in and become as invested as they were when they first started and see themselves playing this game for years to come. I've also seen the flip side where people have said they're quitting TF2 forever only to return a few days later, which could be a sign of addiction, but I'm not sure. Either way, TF2 has something about it that just keeps people coming back to it. No matter what state the game is in, somehow it draws people back and I don't understand how. And I know myself recently, I haven't been playing as much TF2, not because my love of the game is gone or because I've quit myself, but because life just keeps getting in the way. But I want to return properly soon and I want to return with some great videos, but life is just so, so busy. And I feel like that's the reason as well. A lot of people leave the game. Life just gets in the way. 
One thing I would be interested about is if you are watching right now and you've never quit TFT, you've been playing it for 10 years, something like that, or like a crazy amount of time, what would it take to actually make you leave? Like if you're a diehard TF2 fan, you don't think you're ever going to quit the game. What What is the thing that is going to push you over the edge to click that button? Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.